Arctic, a region facing profound changes. But not all are easy to detect at first sight. Underneath the surface of the sea, something is happening, something we cannot see with the naked eye. The Arctic Ocean is becoming increasingly acidic. Carbon dioxide from the air dissolves in great quantities in the cold Arctic waters. Nowhere else does the pH level drop quicker than here. But what are the consequences? Scientists from the Alfred Wegener Institute set out for the far north. With their research vessel, Heinke, they venture into the fjords of Svalbard. This is where chief scientist Felix Mark wants to examine the fate of fish in acidifying waters. Marine animals are very closely connected to the water they live in. When the acidity of water increases, the acidity of their blood and other body fluids will therefore increase too. Felix Mark is eager to find out how this affects marine animals, so he has set out to catch fish. 80 degrees north, the first haul. Scientists hope for a big catch. If everything turns out as planned, the tank will be teeming with small Atlantic and polar cod. Atlantic cod, a sight scientists will have to get used to. As the water temperature continues to rise, more and more Atlantic cod swim into the waters of Svalbard and spread into a region another species has dominated for a long time, the polar cod. We want to find out if the Atlantic cod has already begun to replace the polar cod around Svalbard, and also if ocean acidification could play an important factor in the competition between the two fish species. But the scientists do not just chase after fish. They also lower so-called bongo nets down to a depth of 1,000 meters, a trap for copepods. These tiny crustaceans are the preferred food of polar cod and therefore of great interest to Felix Mark. Ocean acidification obviously does not just affect fish, but also the animals on their menu. Certain organisms might no longer be available in the same size or quantities. Some questions, however, can only be answered in the lab. For that reason, Felix Mark returns with 650 live fish to the Alfred Wegener Institute in Bremerhaven. Back in the lab, he puts them into single aquariums with different temperature and carbon dioxide concentrations. Here we can individually measure their food intake, digestion and growth. This way, we can find out at what levels of carbon dioxide and temperature fish strive best. The fish will stay in their single aquaria for a couple of months. By then, they should have gotten used to the warmer and more acidic water. Possibly, however, at the cost of their fitness. A fitness test will show if this is true. One after the other, Felix Mark and his colleagues put the fish into a swim tunnel. The swim tunnel is like a treadmill for fish. By adjusting the flow, we can let the fish swim faster and faster. That's how we can determine the fish's maximum swimming speed. But not all side effects of ocean acidification can be observed from the outside. The interesting question is, what happens inside the fish, in the blood, cells in their brain? A magnetic resonance tomography might hold the key to the answers. The great advantage of these scanners is that we can look directly inside the living fish. We don't need to anesthetize or even kill the animal. This insight allows the scientists to measure the blood flow or oxygen concentration in the tissue. Once they have evaluated the data, the scientists will know how and if ocean acidification affects the brain activity of the Atlantic and polar cod.
Felix Mark is one of the first scientists to investigate how warmer and more acidic waters affect fish. And even beyond the confines of the Institute, his research is of great interest to many. The experiments we conduct here are part of a German research project on ocean acidification called bioacid. The results enable us to get a better understanding of how fish and other marine organisms react to ocean acidification and warming. This way, we can predict how ecosystems will change and how the fisheries will need to adapt. Further experiments will show if Atlantic and polar cod are able to adapt to their new living conditions. But scientists are already certain, underneath the surface of Arctic waters, an entire ecosystem is changing.